In this episode, we are going to cover what that air and vapor does to performance. And what I mean by performance is fuel mileage, which we do not guarantee. A lot of our customers experience it, right. but horsepower, and then I'm going to get into regions. Because they all relate to one thing, that's timing of the engine. Now let's take a, you know what, brake system. Okay. Hydraulic brakes, not, not an air brake. Right. But you take a brake system and you have a pedal down here, you have a line going to your caliper, you're clamping the brake and if you have to compress air, if you have enough, you're going to smack something in front of you. Or a uh, bucket on a dump truck. Right. Same thing. It's gonna, your dad has a bunch of dump trucks. Right. Has a, if he has air in there, it's not going to operate, operate properly. The same thing with the fuel injection system. I don't care how electronic it is being controlled. It's a mechanical action. Take the old B model, C model, A model caterpillars, or the P7100 pump on the 12 yep. valve. Yep. You have a cam down here driving an uh, injector, okay, that compresses a one and a half, two foot rail line, right? Mm -hmm. Once it reaches 2,500-ish PSI, it pops open. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a, that, any air in there, that air delay, delays your injection timing. Now, with those old B models and stuff like those, we got huge horsepower and fuel mileage increases. Right. But those pumps lasted forever, which we'll get into later on. But with the unit injectors, we still get a nice increase in horsepower, but we're saving the injection system, like we said, because you're compressing a little dab, uh, 26 thousandths of a gallon of fuel or less, and that air, is you know is delaying your injection timing what do i mean by retarding the timing let's say this is your injector this is your piston and i'm going to exaggerate because we're talking about degrees that we can't see of course All right let's say it's supposed to fire here but it fires up here well what does that mean well when it fires down here this is what they call a longer burn you have more time for the fuel to atomize across the piston mm -hmm. heat up and burn and it's even especially when you don't have air in there it's even of course if you retard that timing, and if air is doing it, you know, you don't have time for the fuel to atomize across the piston. Right. You can have hot spots. Right. Concentrated areas of heat, which can actually melt the piston. Which people see the holes burn through the piston. Right. I'm wondering if the other thing is, is when you're, we're running the higher horsepower engine, if that's why it's cocking that piston and can lock that at times because it's uneven pressure. Now that's just a theory, okay? I want to make sure that we're expressing fact when it's our opinion or theory. Of course, right. But it seems to make sense on the, in the cock and the piston. But what does that mean? That's a shorter burn. So here, when you're firing down here, you're burning more of the fuel, the longer burn. So you're getting more BTUs out of the same fuel. So that's IE, more power, to where you can pull your foot out of it and get the fuel mileage. Right. Which we don't guarantee, but you're going to gain power. Now, when you retards up here, you don't burn as much fuel, less BTUs, costing your fuel mileage, costing your horsepower, and then those less BTUs turn into soot. Now, if you're not running a DPF, it just goes out the exhaust and you see it, which we've actually reduced opacities. If you have a DPF on there, that DPF is gonna be filtering that soot and causing regions. The timing comes back, every engine has an area that it likes to run within. I right, mean, 12 right. valves have in stock, they came out, what, 12, 11 and a half degrees of 15? Yeah, I want to say around uh, 12, 12 and a half degree, right around that range. But different years had different, you know, 13 degree, 11 degree. Of course. Right? right. So on a distributor, you take a gas engine, you retard that timing out of that area where it likes to run. Horsepower goes down, fuel mileage goes down, heat goes up, it runs rougher, things like that. Right. Air does the same thing, thing. It retards your timing. Let me grab this sheet that a mathematician engineer helped me out with because I could not figure it out myself. But he took an engine, and this is a 60 series Detroit. I gave him the, the information, and he broke it down. And I was uh, putting a fast system on a Detroit, and he pulled out, and this guy pulled out the computer and everything. And he noticed that on stationary fuel, because the truck's been sitting, that's around 10% air and fuel, not the agitated, not the temperature change and all, everything else that Cummins talked about. But the R RPM was fluctuating about 15, 20 RPM. Well, what else was fluctuating at the same time was a pulse width injection. Hmm. And it was fluctuating between 3.8 milliseconds and 4.2 milliseconds, or 
m milliseconds different. Right. Okay. And he calculated it up. At 1500 RPM, that engine is turning 25 revolutions per second. Put that in degrees, and that would be 9,000 degrees, 25 times 360. That's a revolution. Right. Okay. Then he divided by the milliseconds, he found out, he charged the timing by 3.6 degrees on stationary fuel sitting still. Wow. And, and that's actually got me thinking for the high performance guys uh, doing the tunes in these trucks, that is going to make tuning more difficult. Say you're running an engine on a dyno where you might not necessarily have uh, the fuel is super agitated. You get your tune dialed in. Right. Put it in the truck, you're going down the track, racing, you have fuel sloshing, or you're bouncing down the track, pulling, that... Uh, and the amount of back, the vacuum, because they've upped their fuel flow drastically. That, that Detroit sitting still, um, going down, uh, you know, going down the road's flowing about 90 gallons an hour. I don't know what it is at an idle. Okay. But yeah, those guys... Yeah, that's going to make the tuning much more difficult to get a consistent tune from dyno to real world going down the track. And that's where you brought up the burning a hole in the piston. Yep. And then I brought up, I believe that's where the piston would be cocking sideways mm -hmm. because of those. But then I look at the working environment, the back hose out there, I look at all that, the off-road equipment, I yep. look at the semis going down the road. Now you have a lot of agitated fuel, okay? Because they're driving for hours upon hours upon hours going down the road. So now they have not only the 10% air and fuel that Cat talks about, then you have all the other variables that Cummins talked about. Right. Okay. And so now, what does the timing do then? I mean, we're retarding at 3.6 degrees with non-agitated fuel. What is it, does it go to? I have no idea. So who knows where your engine performance and consistency is just going to be all over the chart. And fuel mileage. and. Um, the, with fuel at the cost that it is today, that's what we're hitting on. And the, ne in the next episode, we're going to be getting in what damages it does to your fuel injection system because there's the CP4 recalls out there, the lawsuit of the CP4. I mean, the CP3s have problems. Anything with this high pressure is really having problems. And we're going to go into those problems, what, what air does to the fuel system.